Hey YouTube, it's Chuck. Good morning. Well, guess what? We're getting closer, but we have not swarmed yet in the observation hive. Um, I want to give you a little bit of the climate. So here we're in Jacksonville, Florida in zone 9A, but we've had two uh, evenings where it got down into the low 40s. And my apiary temperature uh, last night got down to 42.9 uh, with a relative humidity of about 86%. So cool and moist is the weather we had. And what that also means is these bees aren't gonna jump out of the hive uh, and swarm in that kind of a morning. Now granted, it's gonna climb up into the you know, low 70s today, uh, but most of these swarms that happen out of hives, in my experience, it's not a, not a hard and fast rule, happen between nine and 11 a.m. It's something about waking up, knowing where the sun is, looking like it's a good day, and then swarming. Uh, in optimal conditions. Um, so I don't think these bees are gonna jump out of this hive this morning. But the important thing that I want to uh, highlight on this video is they have not swarmed yet. Now, what, one of the first things you, you might notice here is the moisture. The moisture in this hive is because of that relative humidity, the nectar that they have in this hive even though I have ventilation holes, and I don't know if you can see that perfectly, but I've got a ventilation hole here, 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 and here with an eighth inch screen. There's also a ventilation hole on top if that feeder weren't there where air could go vertically. But there are so many bees in here with the relative moisture um, in this hive that we're getting a little bit of fogging. So imagine in any other colder climate, um, this is the moisture you try to prevent with adequate ventilation because too much of this that the bees can't manage um, can actually start to cause some problems. But this is not too bad. I'm just pointing out the fact that we haven't seen moisture on the glass yet, but this cool morning, um, we actually do have some. Now, the big news is we have a capped queen cell. Now, I've only noticed one capped queen cell, and I'm hoping that we're gonna get it to, to show it to you here when, if the bees move off of it. And I'm just using my magic eraser. But I got home last night and I did check it, so I'm gonna back it up and say this was capped on the 15th of March in this hive. So maybe the time when this hive swarms based off of the 315 will be a data point we can talk about but um, I'm gonna keep this circle just so we can kind of keep an eye if these bees move off of it. There's another cell over here they're working on. The capped one is right, gosh, it's even hard to see it. It's right here. Uh, last night I saw them putting the little, kind of the peanut texture on the edges, but the bottom was completely capped. They were no longer going up in it, feeding. There it is starting to come in just a little bit. Fully capped cell right here. This beehive, this observation hive, is absolutely packed with bees. Now, this is probably 100% capacity, meaning like there are no bees outside flying and foraging. They're not hanging on the outside of the hive. I checked on the entrance uh, this morning. So every bee that this hive has made that has not passed away this spring is packed in here right now. And you can't even really see the comb, but they are all capped uh, or in the process of hatching and, and relaying right now. I don't see the queen, and I have not seen her this morning. Maybe in this video we'll see her in a few minutes. But one of the things to look for as the hive starts to swarm is she should probably be slimming down and, and getting ready to fly. Um, because once this cell is capped, this hive is in preparation and ready to swarm. Um, and there's a, I don't know if they want to cap any others, and I don't know if there are any queen cells in the middle of these frames that are already capped. I can only see these cells they're doing right here. But what happens is the worker bees start to push her around and keep her from laying. And oddly, that creates, um, and if you watch Corey Stevens, he's talked about this this year too, uh, a natural brood break. In other words, if she stops laying in order to slim down, there's also going to be a natural brood break in here where there won't be any other eggs that they can make a queen cell out of. They're going to go ahead and make the, uh, let these hatch, and, and that's where the new queen will come from. Now, I have mentioned on my other videos that the queen in this hive is clipped. So she will not be able to successfully swarm uh, and fly away. So more than likely when this hive swarms, 
uh, there will be a ball of bees at the base uh, outside of the entrance on the other side of this wall, and they'll probably be keeping her warm, and there will probably be a bouvoir of bees hanging in a tree some, somewhere nearby. It will be a failed swarm, but if I can capture it, I will take her with that ball of bees and hopefully catch the ball of uh, the bouvoir of bees and put them in a separate hive. I would like to have this uh, hive naturally swarm. Um, but anyway, that's just a quick update on the observation hive. We have a cap cell as, on or about the 15th, which was yesterday. And uh, it could have happened the day before, but it was either the 15th or late on the 14th. And I'm just gonna write that here uh, for the time being so I can keep my notes. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you enjoy this content. Just kind of keeping you update on my swarm observation hive here in Jacksonville, Florida in zone 9A. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a great day.